QuickBooks Online 2024 Inventory Quantity Adjustment Form. Get ready and some coffee because we're diving into it within two its QuickBooks Online. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up reports like we do every time. Reports on the left hand side in the favorites. We're going to right click on the balance sheet, open link in a new tab. Right click it on the profit and loss, open link in a new tab. Let's go to those tabs up top that we opened. Middle tab, closing the hamburger. There's our balance sheet tab into the right. Closing the hamburger. There's our profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Back to the first tab. That's the setup process that we do every time. We're gonna do our data input on the first tab and then look at the results to the reports to the right. Selecting the plus button on the dropdown, we've been looking at the forms that are populated within each cycle, customer, vendor, and then we went over to the other area, which isn't actually really a cycle, but forms and activities that are often used within a cyclical period and therefore QuickBooks still uh, wants to put them over here. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com uh, in the drop down that we typically use when we do the normal kind of kind of accounting process transactions. So this time we want to look at the inventory quantity adjustment form. So this will be a form that will only be useful. You'll typically only need it if you're selling inventory, number one, and number two, if you're tracking the inventory within the QuickBooks system. So quick reminder here, if you deal with inventory, that's gonna add more complexity into your accounting system. And then the question will be, do I want to track inventory within QuickBooks? You may not always want to do it, you might have like a Shopify store or be selling stuff on Amazon and those platforms might be tracking the quantity of inventory already. We talk about this possibly in, a, in another uh, section or, or course diving into that in a little bit more detail, but just note that you might then just track in QuickBooks using a periodic type of inventory system rather than trying to track each of the units as they're sold on a perpetual inventory system or you might be using some system and having the inventory tracked in Excel or some other worksheet, in which case, again, you would track the quantity in the other worksheet and then adjust it periodically in uh, QuickBooks using your cost of goods sold calculation, which would be beginning inventory plus purchases gives you the inventory available for sale minus the ending inventory, which you would know because you're going to do a physical count. You also have to do with flow assumptions, most likely. LIFO, FIFO, weighted average, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So this, this will be the general idea we have inventory. So obviously the quantity adjustment would be that if we're tracking inventory on a perpetual inventory system, then it's gonna track the inventory real time. We should have the exact cr amount correct in our system. However, it won't be correct if problems happen, such as shrinkage happened or something like that, theft happened. Some, some punk kid keeps on coming to our work site and stealing all of our stuff just for the just for the the fun of it for it seems like i don't even know what he's doing with it for crying out anyways so if that's happening then we're gonna have to make adjustments periodically to the physical count that we're seeing so let's just recap the inventory process let's go down here in the sales area 
and remember that if you're going to be dealing with inventory you're going to set them up in your products and services so we set them up in the products and services i'm going to close up the hamburger and then let's just add an inventory item just so we get an idea of that process it would be an inventory item as opposed to a service item i'm just going to call it item number one and we're going to say that it's going to be now the quantity on hand i'm going to say that there's 10 on hand that i'm just going to put on hand at this point in time which means quickbooks will make a journal entry for it to to record the purchase of it i'm going to say that they're on hand uh hold on a second what did i do i don't want help i want to put it on hand as of the first of december reorder point I'm not going to put a reorder point here. I'll just keep it blank. Inventory account is the account that will be increasing and decreased when we purchase it with a bill or check form. And when we sell it with an invoice or sales receipt form, the sales price, let's say is $100. Let's say it's $120. Income account, what's going to be recorded. Sales tax will be applicable. And we're going to purchase side is going to be the cost of $100. So we buy them for 100. We sell them for 120. When they're put on the books, they're gonna be put on the books at $100, not the marked up $120 uh, there. So I'm gonna say, save it and close it. And so now if I go to my reports on, well, if I scroll down, I should be able to see this item now. So now we have this item. And if I made an invoice, if I went to my plus button and made an invoice, then I can see my items here. This is the stuff that I'm gonna be selling, right? I'm gonna sell my item as we saw in invoices in prior presentations. And as I sell this, it will record it on a perpetual inventory method, meaning that inventory is gonna be decreased in units as well as dollar amount uh, as we go because it'll track it in the sub ledger. Let's take a look at that sub ledger. I'm not gonna record it. I'll close this out and say, do you wanna leave without? Yes. Let's go to the balance sheet and let's run it to update it there's our inventory account 159625 if you're doing this on a periodic system and tracking the inventory outside in excel or your shopify store or amazon or whatever then you would simply adjust this dollar amount possibly periodically based on your physical count that you've done elsewhere or in another system but if you're tracking it within quickbooks quickbooks needs to be able to update every time you make a transaction that includes inventory such as the purchase of inventory sale of inventory with invoices and sales forms so we need a sub ledger let's go to the tab to the right right click on it and duplicate this tab and i'll open up a sub ledger just to show that process we're going to go to the reports on the left hand side close the hand boogie type in up top inventory valuation summary so now you can see that this is our our inventory here's the 10 that we purchased i basically purchased it when i put it on the books because i said there was 10 quantity on hand so it added 10 on the books and they're they're they cost a hundred dollars so that means we have a thousand dollars notice it's not a hundred and twenty dollars the sales price it's $100, that's what they're on the books for, what we purchased them for. And so that ties out to all of that inventory, ties out to the 159625, which is on the balance sheet, uh, 159625. And it gives us the units that we have uh, over here, which is gonna be the quantity. So we could track the quantity as well. So what if I go in and I count my inventory and some punk kid stole my stuff right off right out of my warehouse for crying out loud what's going on with the neighborhood these days it's ridiculous in any case so then we're gonna we're gonna go to the first tab we could go into the drop down and we would say that we want an inventory quantity adjustment inventory quantity adjustment and so let's say this happened on uh the current date usually the day that the physical count that happens note that we're tracking it perpetually so you you might say hey i don't need to adjust the inventory because the inventory is being adjusted when i purchase it and sell it i don't need to do a periodic adjustment but we still need to adjust it and we still need to do a physical count otherwise we wouldn't know that there's shrinkage something got stolen something spoiled something is obsolete or whatever 
and we have to get get rid of it or else you know something right so if that's the case then we we can go over here we're going to say let's say that we counted these and there's only like eight of them right and so i'm going to go back on over here and say that we had uh the the other account that will be impacted oftentimes we might set up an account called inventory shrinkage right if not it would go you could put it to cost of goods sold but we probably want to track a different account saying hey look these are not the items that we sold this is due to shrinkage or theft or some some other thing that went wrong and therefore we're still going to expense it as a cost of goods sold type of account but we want to track it in a separate account as cost of goods sold so we can see uh see the difference between the two and so we're going to say this was item one and then this is item one and then let's say the new quantity is only eight the, oh not 80 eight that's the physical count that we had so there's the, the the system is showing that there's 10 on hand and we're saying well no there's only eight there's only eight on hand so the change is two that means two need to be written off so what is this going to do this will actually record a journal entry because it's going to those two represent a dollar amount of in our case they were 100 each 200 dollars so you would think that inventory has to go down by you know the 200 dollars and we got to record the other side somewhere it's going to go to the income statement we could put it to cost to goods sold but we probably want to create this other account which is a cost to goods sold type of account called shrinkage or something like that uh to show the to show the difference between a sale and the expense as a result of theft or whatever or spoilage or whatever so let's save it and close it and then if i go to my balance sheet and we run this again we can say okay now if i go into my inventory uh closing this out we're going to say the inventory uh that i had to refresh the screen again but here it is so here's the quantity there's the the 200 that's being decreased and you can see the transaction type is an inventory quantity adjustment normally when you see a decrease you would think it would be a sale which would be an invoice or sales receipt but this time it was an adjustment for the shrinkage form if i go into that we're going to say there it is there's my inventory quantity adjustment so it is showing uh as a type of form so there it is previous adjustments and so on if i close this back out and go back the other side should be on the income statement tabbing to the right and running it so we put it into the shrinkage uh which is a cost of goods sold so there's the cost of goods sold we put it under the same category of cost of goods sold but it's the shrinkage so it's still an expense because we bought the inventory and we were we needed to to do that to get to to process for our business purposes and we have to deal with with theft and and spoilage and that kind of stuff so it's still an expense but we put it in an, in, in a different account than cost of goods sold although cost of a goods sold type of account is where we put it and then on the sub ledger report then we have the shrinkage brings the inventory count down to eight now which means we have eight hundred dollars a hundred each times eight eight hundred that gives us a total of one three nine six twenty five which should tie out to the balance sheet one three nine six uh twenty five so the bottom line if i go back to the first tab for the uh for the inventory quantity adjustment it's only going to be used if you have inventory and even then it will only be used if you're tracking the inventory within quickbooks on a perpetual inventory system meaning the inventory is going up when you make the purchase of it with a bill or expense form and going down every time you sell it with an invoice or the sales receipt instead of tracking it on a periodic inventory system such as you might track it in excel outside uh and and then and then you and then you'd have to do those adjustments uh periodically as you do your periodic basically adjustments uh into the system when you're doing a perpetual inventory system you still need to do a physical count even though it's tracking inventory real time because of things like errors things like shrinkage things things like uh spoilage which means that obviously if the system says there's 10 units of inventory and you counted only eight units of inventory who are we going to trust 
we're going to trust our eyeballs, right? We counted eight units of inventory. We have to fix the system. What happened to the other two units? I don't know. They got lost. Someone stole them. Shrinkage, spoilage, whatever happened. But we have to adjust the physical count down to the physical uh, reality. And we do that with the inventory quantity adjustment. 